Okay, so we're going to cover CBC padding oracle attack. So right here we're drawing C1, the cipher. It is four cells long. C1 gets input into the AES encrypting algorithm, decryption algorithm, I mean. The output is going to be an intermediary decryption that we're just going to denote as D1. And to get back the plain text, we're going to XOR D1 with C0. C0 is also the IV or the initialization vector. And as a result, we get back the plain text, P1, which is also same size as C0. Now each cell in C1 is four bits. We're just going to do this to simplify the arithmetic also known as a nibble. Now D1 can be thought of as just being the decryption of C1. So a, D, a DEC function or decryption function of C1. And so that operation is encapsulated in D1. And this, is, uh, this allows us to not have to think about the C1 decryption. Okay, so now we're going to rewrite this statement again uh, as D1 XORed with C0. Which is going to get us the plain text P1. Now the attacker doesn't know D1, the attacker doesn't know P1, but the attacker knows C0, the cipher. They can manipulate that one, that value. We can rewrite this as a equation as P of I equals D of I XORed with C of I minus one. And if C is zero, then that's pretty much equivalent to the initialization vector. Attacker doesn't know P of I, attacker doesn't know D of I, but attacker does know C of I minus one. So now we're gonna draw up a scenario, uh, what the attacker might see. This is what the attacker can do when trying to manipulate the cipher text. So again, we have D1. D1 is still the same, it hasn't changed. We have C0 star, so C0 star is a cipher that gets manipulated by the attacker. The attacker can modify that. So the oracle will XOR those two, and we'll get P of, P of 1 star, which is the modified plain text, because the plain text will be, if C0 is different, the plain text will also be different. Attacker doesn't know D1, but attacker can manipulate C0, and attacker can infer what P, what the plain text will be based on the feedback from the oracle. So we have P of I star. So now we have an equation for this too. We have D of I XOR C of I star minus one. So the stars are the values that the attacker is manipulating, and the attacker can infer what those values are the attacker still doesn't know what D of I is. So we can now we can solve for D of I. We can get that equation above. We can solve for D of I. We have P of I star, XOR, C of I star minus one. And we can get the equation above right there, and we can just put it right there. So basically, the original plain text can be recovered if we find out what D of I is. So the goal here is to find D of I. Once we find D of I, we can substitute it in, and we can solve for it. And basically, we get back the plain text that way. So we know attacker knows what 
those star values are. It knows what C of I minus one is. But the attacker is trying to find out what D of I and P of I are. That's what that that's the equation we're trying to solve here. All right, so here's kind of a visual diagram just to sort of get across what's going on here. So on the left side, you have the attacker. On the right side, you have the oracle. The attacker is trying to solve the equation D1 equals P1 star XOR C0 star. The attacker does not know what D1 is, so it's underlined in red. The attacker does not know what P1 star is either. And so it's underlined in red and the attacker knows what C0 star is, so it's green. C0 star is the initialization vector and the attacker is basically modifying this value. So it sends C1 and C0 star to the Oracle. On the back end, the Oracle decrypts C1. It then XORs that output, which is basically the decryption of C1 is basically just D1. It XORs it with the modified C0 star. And as a result, we get a modified P1 star. After this operation happens, the Oracle checks the padding for P1 star. And depending on whether the padding is valid or invalid, it will send back a response to the attacker. So if it's invalid, like in red, it will, the attacker will need to guess another value for C0 star. And so the attacker will basically just try to brute force these values. It will send this C0 star value and the Oracle will again do the same operations. It'll check the padding of P1 star. If the padding of P1 star is valid, then the attacker will use this output to solve for D1. So you see D1 equals P1 star XOR C0 star. So the attacker now knows what P1 star is because it knows that the it knows that the padding at that position was valid and the attacker knows what padding value to expect. So now it can get D1. But basically the attacker's end goal is that after many enumerations of this attack, it will hopefully build the entire cells. It will build the entire states of D1. And as an end goal, once it knows the full values of all the of all the D1 bytes, it will then XOR that D1 with the original C0, which the attacker also knows, and it will get back the original plain text P1. And that is the end goal of the attacker. So now we're going to do a real example. We're going to use our P of I equation and our D of I equation to carry out the CBC padding oracle attack. Uh, P1 is the plain text that is only known to the oracle. C0, or the initialization vector, is known to the attacker. Uh, P1 star is, um, those P1 star values are the padding states that we want to solve for. And C0 star is the, basically it's the initialization vector that the attacker is tampering with. We can set all those values to zero and we're solving for, right now we're solving for the last cell. We're solving for Z0 sub three. So what we do is we just guess. Um, we guessed one, we got a two that was invalid padding. Now let's say that we guess three, we get a four, we get feedback that it's invalid. So the attacker just keeps guessing. And the goal is that as the attacker, we wanna get a padding of one. So the Oracle should be resolving to padding of one. So we guess a nine, we get a one. So that is valid padding and we get feedback for that. 
So now we solve for d of i. So we're solving for d1 sub 3. Using that d of i equation, we're going to plug in p of i star, which is 1, padding of 1. And we're XORing it with c0 star, which is 9. We carry out that binary equation. We get 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And that is 8. So now we know that d1 sub 3 is 8. So now we can solve for z0 sub 2. So for c0 sub 2, uh, p1 star, we're going to try to solve for padding of 2, two twos. For the third cell, uh, it's easy. We just set it up. So we put, we write down 8 XOR2. So those 8s are going to cancel out, and we're, they're going to give us the 2 that we want. And for C0 sub 2, we're just going to guess. If we guess 1, we got a 7. Feedback says padding is invalid. We take another guess. Let's say that we guessed 13, and the oracle got a 2. The feedback was that the padding was valid. So now we know that we have a solution to the equation. So again, we solve for d1 sub 2. And we're going to pl plug in that p1 sub 2, which is 2, xor with 13, which gives us 15. So D1 sub 2 is 15. Now we're going to solve for padding of 3, 3 threes. So for C0 sub 2 and C0 sub 3, we're going to set it up again. So we're going to put... 8 XOR 3 so that those 8s cancel out and we get a 3. And we're going to put there 15 XOR 3 as that value so that we force it to be 3. Now for C0 sub 1, we're going to guess again. So let's say we guess 0 and feedback says we got valid padding. So now again we, we solve for D1 sub 1, which is 3, x or 0, and that gives us 3, so d1 sub 1 is 3. Now for the last cell, p1 sub 0, we're going to look at the padding 4 case, 4 force. So again, we're going to set up these values, we're going to XOR everything with 4 so that we force these cells to have a padding value of 4. So that would be 3x or 4 right there. And for the last cell, we just keep guessing. And let's say we guess the we kept guessing and we got a we it turns out that 4 gave us a valid padding. So now we use the D of I equation again. So it ends up being 4, X or 4. That's 0. So D1 sub 0 is 0. So now we have all the values of D1. So now we can use our P of I equation, which is P of I equals D of I X or C of I minus 1. Or in other words, C0. So we're we're going to get our D1 that we solved. And then we're going to XOR it with the C0 that the attacker knows. Not the tampered C0, but the C0 that is actually the cipher that was given to us by the Oracle initially. So that's XOR with C0.
So if we carry out this operation, we'll get two. eight, six, and one, which matches up with our, with the P1 that the Oracle, Oracle knows, but not what the attacker is supposed to know. So as we saw, we were able to use CBC, the CBC padding Oracle attack in order to decrypt a cipher text, get back the plain text, all without having to use all without having to know the secret key.